Daz Moss on both here. The new series have a bunch of new flagship phones come out like the HTC 109, the Galaxy S6, and S6 Edge. But late to the game, we have another new flagship phone from LG. This is the LG G4. So the LG G4 is kind of LG's answer to the 109 and the Galaxy S6. The 109 had a pretty not good camera for a flagship phone, so they packed a pretty powerful camera into this guy, and the Galaxy S6 got rid of removable storage and battery and stuff like that, so they put that in this guy as well. So let's see how this phone stacks up against all the other flagships in the full review. So let's first talk about the design. It's very similar to last year's LG G3 and almost identical to the G Flex 2. It has a slight curve but not as dramatic as the one on the G Flex 2, but it does not flex so do not try to do that because you might just end up breaking it. It has the same button placement, the same port placement, and if you have a G3 and you get an upgrade to the G4, I think you'll feel right at home. So this being my first true LG phone, I kind of like the design, I mean I didn't have a G3 so I'm, it's, taken, it's been taking me a while to get used to the back button placement, but other than that I think it's a solid design even though they could have went with higher materials, but I think most people should be able to deal with it. So one of the best features on this phone is the display. It's rocking a 5.5 uh, Quad HD 2560 by 1440 display and it is absolutely beautiful. Color reproduction is excellent, viewing angles are solid because it's an IPS panel. And it's also uh, a quantum display, I don't know if it's quantum dot or quantum, I don't really know if there's an actual difference between the two. But yeah, LG is marketing it as a quantum display and uh, it's pretty freaking awesome. I've tested some 4K videos to watch on this thing and it's a very excellent experience. And I think the curve that they have on the design of the G4 gives it a slight feeling of immersion when watching full screen videos. But to power a display so good like this, you're going to need something pretty beefy. So this thing is rocking a Hexacore Snapdragon 808 CPU, and it performs really good. I know a lot of people are complaining that it didn't have the 810 inside, but I don't think it should make too much of a difference when it comes to real world performance, because on paper, there's only a two core difference between the 810 and the 808. So like I said, the 808 has lots of processing power, uh, web browsing is a breeze, gaming is freaking phenomenal, and because it, this thing also has 3 gigabytes of RAM, so you can open lots of applications without bogging the device down. So as I've already said, this thing has all of its buttons placed on the back, and they've centered it so your fingers can reach it perfectly without any discomfort, and it has a nice feel in the hand. So, but these buttons also have features, so if you double tap the volume up button, then it actually opens up a note app where you can just take quick notes of anything you need to write down or something quick. And if you double tap the volume down button, then it actually takes a picture, which I thought was pretty cool. But I wouldn't recommend using this uh, just for regular use if you don't have to rush it because uh, not always does it come out the best looking as it could have been if you un unlocked it and opened the camera app the normal way. But other than that, it's still a cool feature to have if you're in a rush and you need to get a quick snap of something. But regarding the volume down to take a picture, sometimes it would not work after like the three or fourth time of me double tapping the volume down buttons. I don't know if I was just pressing it too quick or what, but uh, I don't think it should be a deal breaker though because it's still a pretty useful feature to have, but just be wary that this may happen sometimes. Next, let's talk about the operating system. So, it's running off of Android 5.1, which I think is great as a ROM user. I don't have to worry about having to stop the XDA forms to make sure I can root this thing and get a brand new version of Android as a custom ROM on it right away, because it basically has the latest version of Android. And it's also running off of the LG's UX 4.0 skin, which um, it's been taking me a while to get used to, but it's... It's okay, I mean, the UI has lots of features to it, which I'm going to go over in a minute, and it's a really solid OS. So the OS has lots of features baked into it, and one of my favorite features is Dual Window. 
So you access Dual Window by opening the Recent Apps button, and uh, Dual Window will just be sitting right there, a little tab at the bottom. And But it's a really cool feature, but one of the things I don't like about it is that you have very few apps to choose from, just basic stuff like Hangouts, Gmail, YouTube, Chrome, Messaging, and all real basic apps. But there are lots of apps that I have installed in this phone that I would like to use in Dual Window, but unfortunately, due to software limitations, I can't, which I don't think they should have done because a lot of people have lots of apps that they like to use and maybe they like to open it in Google Window. But one uh, combination that I use all the time is Chrome and YouTube because whenever I'm browsing the web, I can open up a YouTube link and it opens automatically up in Dual Window mode, which I have set in the settings. So that's also a pretty cool feature. So Dual Window is an awesome feature on UX 4.0. So, besides the window, there's also little neat things that just, you know, just enhance the spirit experience of UX 4.0, but aren't too big. But there are also some real gimmicky things, like this one feature called on-body detection, where it detects where it's in your pocket or in your hand, so it'll be automatically unlocked and you don't have to put in your pin code, but it's just supposed to detect when it's on a flat surface or away from you, and it will lock itself automatically. And I've tried this feature many times, but it did not work all the times I tried it. Not a single time it worked, so I gave up on it. And I was really disappointed because that would have been a cool feature to use. But on my model, uh, it wouldn't work. UX 4.0 also has something called Smart Settings, where you can have the change to the certain profiles, like the Bluetooth profile and sound profile for when you're away from home and when you're at the house. It also has other accessory stuff like Bluetooth uh, when connected to music. And it's just, uh, I don't think it's something that Android stock, a uh, custom ROM builder could have done, couldn't have done, but it's still a useful feature at that. And one other feature that I use on UX 4.0 basically every day is double tap to wake and sleep. So when the device is powered off, if you double tap the middle of the screen, which you have to be precise about sometimes or else it won't work, it unlock, it wakes the screen, and if you double tap usually the top status bar, that's what I do the most, and it turns off the screen, which I use all the time. And I think it's a great thing for people to have if they're still taking them a little time to get used to the back button placement. So double tap to wake and sleep is an awesome feature. Another cool security feature is actually not code. Now, I personally wouldn't use this because of what if somebody's watching me and I have a very basic not code and people will be able to see what my code is and access my phone. But it's you just set a knock pattern, and you, while the device is off, you can actually set in the pattern. It will unlock and open at the same time. Or you could just turn it off and set your knock pattern. Uh, it's a very simple process to do, and it's very useful for certain people who don't feel like remembering uh, a password or a pin or a pattern or something like that, and it's something very basic. Now let's talk about one of my gripes with the G4, and that is the battery life. Uh, for me, I always had the battery saver mode on, and I still only got between three to four hours of full use. That includes gaming, web browsing, watching videos, uh, social media, and all that good stuff. And I think it's all because of the Quiet HD display. I mean, this thing has a 3,000 mAh battery, which should be really good enough. Uh, but luckily, they have the battery removable, so you can remove it and swap it out with a new, fresh new one that is fully charged if you run out quickly, which you probably will. I mean, this thing probably won't last you a full day if you're using it uh, consistently throughout the day. So I personally recommend that you should carry around like a portable charger or just an extra battery because this thing drains pretty fast. But one thing that makes up for the battery life on the G4 is that it charges pretty fast, and I've noticed this. And I did a little investigating, and I found out it's because uh, the wall mount that I use that came with the G4 is actually a 1.8 at wall mount, which is better and greater than the generic wall mounts that come with devices these days. And it also has been confirmed that Qualcomm Quick Charging 2.0 technology will be in the U.S. variants that ship out in early June. My Korean model does not have this technology yet, but I still know that it charges pretty fast. So if you get a U.S. model, it'll be charging even faster than the one I have, which will get you um, pretty fast charging speeds. So another thing I kind of don't like about the G4 is the speaker. It's got one backfiring speaker on the left, bottom left corner, and it really isn't that good. The only thing good I will say about it is that it can get really loud. But other than that, it's all on one channel, so there's not separate speakers. And it kind of sucks. So if you want to listen to a test, 
use one right here. sure you already know that I don't have some crazy expensive and high-end microphone that can show you really how well the speaker performs but you can already tell that it really isn't that good and you don't need some high-end microphone from a video to see that and it's really disappointing because you see phones like the HTC One O Nine or even the Galaxy S6 which had bottom firing speakers with which is way better than backfiring speakers because at least it had two dual channels and it had a better sound to it than these do. So let's also talk about storage. This thing comes with 32 gigabytes of onboard storage for the base model, but it's also expandable, which is something that a lot of people have really uh, been talking about because the Galaxy S5 also didn't have expandable storage, which was really disappointing to longtime Samsung users. But this phone comes with expandable storage and you can also put up to a two terabyte micro SD card which is kind of insane, even though they don't have that technology uh, out yet. I'm sure it'll be crazy expensive when it does come out. But it's uh, the storage on this thing is basically future-proof. So if you do happen to stumble across a 2 terabyte micro SD card, then you'll be set. Now, last but not least, the main feature that everybody has been talking about with the LG G4 is the camera. Now, it has a 16 megapixel uh, f1.8 aperture lens and the camera is phenomenal. It also has a laser uh, sensor right next to the camera and neck by, by the flash as well. The flash is also really good and it gets really bright if you need just a quick flashlight for something. But the camera performance is phenomenal. You can take 4K videos at 30fps, 1080p at 60fps, and I think 720p at 120fps as well as slow motion video. It has lots of manual controls in the settings, and I really love the stock uh, ca LG camera app. It makes uh, gets the best out of the camera. And uh, if you are a stock Google guy who only loves to use stock Google apps, then for this case, don't go with the Google camera because it just ruins the entire experience of the LG G4 camera. You can't record in 4K. You don't have all those awesome manual controls, and the image quality turns out way less uh, as good as it does on the stock LG camera app. You also have 3 second timers, 10 second timers, and you also have voice controls. So you can just say smile to uh, take a picture or you have other things like whiskey or cheese or something like that. But none of those eat worked. The only one that worked for me was the smile voice command. Smile. Cheese. Smile. Cheese. Cheese. Smile. So if you haven't seen my camera test video, you, I'll have that on the link in the description as well as some other things. But like I said, the camera is awesome and this is basically the best camera on a phone to date so far. So the year is not over yet and we still have phones like the iPhone 6S and the Galaxy Note 5 which are presumably, presumably going to have really good cameras. So we'll see how those cameras stack up against this one, but so far this is the best camera phone of 2015. But if there's one thing that annoyed me the most about this phone is that because of the curve on the device, it has absolutely no surface stability. It's always sliding around, and if you have it on a surface and you're just tapping on it all that's on the surface, It'll jiggle and wobble, and that was very annoying to me. But if you're willing to deal with that problem, then the LG 4 is a great phone. So in conclusion, this is an awesome step up from last year's G3. A great display, a phenomenal camera, and awesome OS features. I'm going to give this device an 8.5 out of 10 on the Miles Tech rating scale. And I really think you should pick up this phone around the time that it comes out in the States because as of the day of me recording this video, it is still only out in Korea, 
and this is a Korean preview unit. So I've really enjoyed my time with this phone, and I think you will too if you've been coming from any other existing LG phones or something else. So that's going to be about it for this video. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, make sure to dislike it and tell me why so you can help me make my videos better. Uh, and make sure to stay subscribed to the channel for more coverage of the G4 if you want more. Because I am not done. There's going to be rooting tutorials, ROM reviews, and so on. And make sure to follow me on all social media because I am active on Twitter, mostly Google+, Facebook, Instagram, and all those things. So I always have those links down in the description so you can follow me on there. Especially on Twitter so you can get behind the scenes updates and know what's going on, when videos are coming out, how I'm doing our videos, and other stuff like that. So that's going to be about it, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.